Hi guys, welcome back now to the review and final look at the Teclas X6 Pro after a week's use with this particular 2-in-1 Windows 10 tablet that is powered by our core M37Y30 with 8GB of single channel DDR3 RAM and 256GB of upgradable SSD storage with a little hatch on the back which is really good to see. So I'm gonna try and make this review a little shorter because in the unboxing I've covered a lot of the design. So I'll quickly just go over it for those that can't be bothered seeing the unboxing video or didn't see it. So we have a magnetic detachable optional keyboard which sells for about 65 US. The tablet itself is 499 US at the moment. It's got a really nice screen on it. So this is a 12.6 inch IPS panel fully laminated and by far the best thing about it. Really good. It supports a stylus and unfortunately if you saw my unboxing video I have the correct stylus but it's a complete dead on arrival dud. I don't know what is going on. I bought a new quad A battery for it which it doesn't actually have in the box and nothing absolutely nothing out of it. I don't think it's down to software drivers as some people mentioned. I checked that, it all seems to be there. It has uh, like a good X touch screen, the digitizer and the pen should be working, but hey, it just didn't work for me. So, detachable keyboard as mentioned, it is not backlit. It's a high quality keyboard, very nice to type on. We have good travel, comfortable layout as well. The touchpad works well with Windows Precision drivers, but I find it to be quite annoying because I'm getting a lot of accidental touches from it when typing on the keyboard. So the palm rejection is quite poor in my experience. I ended up disabling it. I plugged in an external mouse and things are a lot easier there. But typing for extended periods on this keyboard, very good. There's a little bit of a bounce to it, but it's quite firm. I'm pressing down now quite hard and you can see so for ports, we have two USB 3 ports on either side. We've got type C, we have micro HDMI out, which is up to 4K 30 Hertz is what that supports. So it has good build quality. The kickstand's 135 degrees. So I'll just demonstrate that too. It goes all the way back here. And yeah, you can press down on that. That's not gonna flop back any further. It is the firmness of this kickstand too. Firm enough that when you press on it, it's not gonna end up falling down. It won't fall down with the weight of this particular tablet as well. The tablet's weight, so the whole package, so with the keyboard is one kilo, uh, 0.24, okay, so 1.24 kilos, and without the keyboard, this is about 180 grams, the tablet just by itself. So I've now swapped over to screen capturing just to demonstrate better the performance you can expect out of the X6 Pro. So this is my website here in Chrome, obviously, as you can see, and I just wanted to demonstrate that I'm using my finger here now. This is very smooth, the scrolling speed here, when you don't have a lot of tabs open. So I will just click on the top one here. That was my first video I posted on this particular model here. So that loads in very quick, as you can see. The wireless performance, I'm not having any issues here. It is very good, I'm on the 5G band, and you get transfer rates maximum of about 390, almost 400 megabits per second. I also did a speed test here. So it's going through the signal through a couple of walls. So it's a little bit slower, but still performing quite well. Here is Geekbench 2. So we've got a good single core score here and multi core score. This is a little faster now. And I'll explain why that is from my first unboxing because I've actually applied a tiny bit of an undervolt here to uh, this CPU. The reason I've done that is, I'll get into this straight away now, is the thermals on this particular unit here are not very good, okay? So this is what happens. So when you start doing demanding work on here, so a lot of tabs open in Chrome, if you're, uh, I don't know, just encoding video, 1080p, 720p will be fine, but not 4K, this is gonna happen, okay? So it got up to 97 degrees. So that's too hot. It didn't and doesn't normally trigger thermal throttling, which is really strange because it's only a few degrees away from that happening. I think T-Junction Max is 105 with this particular chipset. The back of it does get warm too, so it does transmit some of the heat to the back of the case. It will get quite warm to the touch, especially when you're gaming. I've noticed it getting up to about 40 degrees, which is quite toasty. So it's definitely a candidate for my copper heatsink mod that I have to sometimes do on these. So it looks like the copper that they've got in there, or they haven't placed a thermal pad, it's just not doing a sufficient 
sufficient enough job here to keep that chipset cool. So I will demonstrate performance very quickly. So I'm gonna jump right in here into Google, typing on the keyboard again here. So very comfortable to type on this keyboard. I actually do quite like it now after using it for a while. Good key travel and the spacing of the keys as well is good. The touchpad, however, I get a lot of accidental touches there. So the palm rejection, not good on this. I'm using a mouse and I've just got it disabled here at the moment. So I'm gonna search something very generic, uh, cars. I think that's what I did last time on the mini PC there as well. I'll just go along and open up uh, quite a few tabs here just to demonstrate what you, you can expect. Because a lot of people do ask me, oh, can I run 20 tabs in Chrome? Can I run this, can I run that? And we'll just go through this as quick as possible here, just opening up all of these pages. Okay, so I think that's probably enough. The performance is not like a Core i5, not at all. This is just a dual core. Remember, maximum turbo is 2.6 gigahertz, and it is uh, with four threads too. So I'll just swap between these tabs here. So things are loading in, and you, you see that's pretty good. It's not too bad. It'll come in, and the scrolling speed here, a little bit now of lag, you can see that is happening, just loading those images. But this performance, this is better than, say, the Gemini Lake quad cores, okay? Because of the high turbo and just the way the chip is too, it just handles things better. More performance when it comes to graphics too is definitely helping us. So there is a video here that's just uh, starting to run there in the background. So I just closed that off and I wanted to do a 4K demo clip to show you that 4K streaming, that yes, it can do it reasonably well here, a lot better uh, than that mini PC that I've just recently reviewed as well. So this needs to be set to 4K. Okay, enable the stats of course, so we can have a look at the drop frames. And you'll see a few drop frames. Okay, zero at the moment. So that's actually doing really well. The buffer health, 29 seconds, 39 seconds. Good again, I'll go full screen on this. And you'll see it dropped a few, but that is always gonna happen from that transition. So that performance there, that's good, so that's fine. So I mean, it does all right for what it is, a fanless dual core CPU. Now we'll step it up a little bit with some formats that are a little bit difficult, but it does have the hardware native decoding and that is uh, HEVC VP9. So I will play this right here. This is Jellyfish, 140 megabits per second, 4K, 10 bit HEVC. And this is very demanding. Uh, okay, let's go run into that problem. All right, so I need to use VLC player, which I should have. Oh no, Media Play Classic will play this fine. And you can see few stutters at the beginning, but it should get a little bit better. But no, it looks like, no. Just to running this particular file. Bit rates when they're lower, about 100. That's when things are smoother. So I'll just play this Jellyfish one here. And this one's HD. Ah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Windows wants you to buy that, don't they? Which is, of course, something you don't have to do. There we go. That's now a little bit smoother here. So that performance is good. Okay, so we will take a look at those spreadsheets that have loaded up here in the background. So you can see maybe a tiny little bit of lag there with that just bringing it up, loading in. But overall, you can do all your edits, adjust and change things without really too much of a problem. Save the files, and you're not gonna notice too much of a lag with this light computing. This is relatively easy stuff for the Core M3. It doesn't have any problems with this. So I will test out just one game in this video to try and keep it a little bit shorter, just to give you an idea of performance, and that's a Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So this is 720p on the lower settings. You can see the performance is not great. This is even performing worse than the Core i3 5500U. We get an average frames per second that hovers somewhere in the mid 30s to low 30s and it will sometimes dip down to about nine frames per second so a little bit laggy and the temperature just dropped to 13 just then too temperature will slowly just start creeping up higher and higher and higher it's currently at 82 degrees but it will eventually make its way up to 97. so right now you are looking at a sample from the front facing 720p webcam 30 frames per second. The quality is, it's okay, it's average. The audio that you are listening to right now, that is also being recorded on the tablet with its dual array microphones. And that brings me on then to battery life. It's not great. Core M3s have never been good for me. It doesn't matter if it's a Core M3 laptop or a tablet like this one, two and one. I scraped five hours and 17 minutes. This was with the brightness set to 30% 
which is relatively low, but you can still make out what's on the screen fine there. And the charge time is also super slow. It took over three and a half hours to charge it. And that's using the supply 12 volt two amp charger. So not too sure why it's so slow there. You can also charge it via the type C port. It does support power delivery. And that will be a little quicker than bringing it down to about uh, two hours and 40 minutes or so. But still slow charging, not amazing battery life here. So this area is disappointing. But also bear in mind too, when I had my Surface Pro 4, the Core M3 model, I was only getting about five hours of battery life, five and a half out of that one as well. Now, for those of you that missed my unboxing, I'll give you another sample of the speakers. They're not loud enough, they lack bass, they're very flat. All right, so that brings me to my recap now here with my pros and cons. So I really do like this tablet, I've enjoyed it, but there's just some things there that make it kind of a hard recommendation. Uh, first off, the thermals, it just gets too hot when you're doing demanding work that is. So, so normal spreadsheets, docs, internet browsing, Chrome, it'll be in the mid 70s, that's about as warm as it'll get. But when you push it hard gaming, or you start to benchmark or do demanding encoding audio work or video work or something like that, you'll see Eventually, it takes a while, but it will get up to 97 degrees Celsius, which is just too hot. So really, it does need my copper heatsink mod, and I can see the comments already. Will I do it? Will I post a video? I don't think I will because I don't know if I'm going to keep this tablet. I mean, I do like it, but the battery life, five and a half to five hours, not so good there either. I mean, the Surface Pro 4, when I had the Core M3 version, was only getting about five and a half as well. So Core M3s for me have always had terrible battery life. If it went for seven hours or eight hours, that would be great then. Speakers are also very weak. My stylus, unfortunately the stylus, where is it? It's missing. If you see my unboxing, it's dead on arrival. It doesn't work. I replaced the battery, I got another battery for it. Still does not work. I don't know what is going on. It must have been damaged or in transit, or it's just plain and simple dead faulty unit with that, which is not good, of course. Keyboard is great to type on. The touchpad is okay, but it has terrible palm rejection. So if you have it enabled and you're typing, suddenly your cursor will go somewhere else and it just makes it a, a bit difficult and I found it to be very bothersome. So I connected in an external mouse and set the settings to disable the touchpad and then I was happy. So it is good to type on. You can of course increase the angle of it, bring it up and it is good, a little bit of bounce as you'd expect, but really quite a high quality keyboard they have. So overall, very nice screen, good build quality, but poor battery life speakers, thermals, as I mentioned, you really have to think long and hard about if it is worth it, 499 US plus the 60 for the keyboard, I, yeah, I don't really think it is. I was really hoping for this to be an amazing tablet and it's almost there, but maybe next time around Tech Glass can improve the thermals, thermal pad, perhaps a bigger, larger copper heatsink, and work on the palm rejection. And then I think we've got a winner from them, finally from the Chinese tablets. Thank you so much for watching this review. Now, if you do like these longer reviews, then please do give a like because that helps the YouTube algorithm and also think about subscribing for future reviews from me. Bye for now.